Good evening all, and welcome. This is Forgotten Lives, and I will be your guest narrator in part of today's video. Also, I have recently done an incredible video on a Wild West figure, so if you are interested, please check it out, there is a link down below in the description. Anyway, for now, get comfortable, and let the darkness take control. The neighbourhood where I grew up was more or less suburbs except the back end of it. It borders on a massive field where nothing has been planted for decades. Part of that border is buffered by woods, and it's in those woods where my friend and I would play. One sunny day, we were particularly deep in the little section of forest. We were attempting to pick through what looked like a very overgrown dozer track. The woods are thick across North Carolina, but the central slash eastern portion is thick, with kudzu in particular, and it was giving us hell. We had probably made a mile of progress in this track when we came across a depression full of water. I hesitate to even say it was a pond, because it was perfectly round like a crater. The water had obviously receded, and in the middle was the exposed roof of an old car. At about that time, one friend found a license plate under the pine duff. It was tagged with buckshot. Next to door, a full car door half buried under pine duff, riddled with bullet holes and shot. Certainly not an uncommon way to have fun in the south, go out, have a few beers with your buddies and shoot some more junk. But what we found next was not a run of the mill Saturday night. Bones. Our still innocent minds first assumed it was a white tailed deer. We started dragging out bones and laying them out side by side, not sure what our objective was, to make a museum of quality deer skeleton or what, but that's what we did. Then the pelvis came up. I recognised it immediately because my uncle was a chiropractor and had a full model skeleton in his office named Mr Bones that I would look at. The more I started looking at our growing collection, the more I started to see Mr Bones taking shape. I got a gut feeling, and being the oldest I told everyone to stop digging and that we needed to go. There was some protest, but I convinced everyone. We hiked back the way we came, and went back to the pool down the road and finished out for the day. But I couldn't stop thinking about the bones. That night I told my mum about what we found, and I had to tell dad the story. At first they weren't convinced, but I wasn't a dumb kid. I knew what I had seen out there. They talked behind closed doors going back and forth. The next day I told the story to two sheriff deputies and took them to the area where we'd entered the woods. About an hour later, there were police vehicles hacking the tiny dead end leading off into the woods. Chainsaws, cleared brush, and men in white suits and detective badges smoked cigarettes and spoke amongst each other as other men carried bags from the forest and put them in vehicles. And they were gone. I waited months to hear something, but heard nothing. I asked my parents what happened, and if they figured it out. Over time, their answers would get more and more uninteresting. Eventually, I quit asking and forgot about it for the most part. It faded into a memory, fuzzy and dreamlike, the way childhood memories are. Eventually, I was home from college and sitting out by the fire with an old neighbourhood friend who had been there that day. He saw everything. We started talking about it and after a few beers, got curious about the outcome. We started researching online and couldn't find a single word of information on a skeleton discovered in our neighbourhood. It was baffling. I asked my parents the next day and they said they had no idea what I was talking about. His parents said the same thing. To this day they are all adamant. It never happened. But we are adamant. It did. Are people trying to cover something up? This happened a few years ago with my friend June, when we were maybe 17 or 18. I'm 23 now. We were out driving around late at night, on country back roads. We were teenagers growing up in a rural area, so going for a drive was one of the main ways we passed the time. We were both into goth stuff and witchcraft at the time, so we pulled off the side of the road to walk around a small graveyard in the woods. It was impossible to see at night, but we'd gone there a few times in the day before, just to hang out. The whole area is heavily forested, 
but the path to the graveyard is short. It's right next to the road, just barely hidden in the woods. Anyway, we started slowly on the small loop that takes you around all the gravestones. Using our flashlights to read the names and look at the carvings on the stones. I was very comforted by graveyards and the night at the time, so I was honestly very relaxed. And we mused about ghosts and death and whatnot, as goth teenagers do. About halfway around the loop, at the furthest point from the car, June got my attention as she'd noticed a light in the woods. It looked far away, like it could have been a car on the road. So we turned away and kept walking. However, about 30 seconds later, she got my attention again, and the light was much closer, and obviously quickly moving towards us. And then I heard the sound of someone crashing through the woods. It was obviously someone with a flashlight making a beeline towards us, and as we backtracked and ran to the car, I unlocked it and climbed into the driver's seat, turning the car on as fast as I could. And right before the lights came on, this huge grisly looking man, dressed head to toe in camouflage, carrying a huge crossbow and wearing a headlamp, busted out of the foliage and was coming right for the car. He had this manic look in his eyes that just made me want to escape even more, and I reversed as quickly as I could and peeled out of there. We didn't stop driving for a while, even though we never saw him following us after we drove off, we both couldn't shake the feeling that we were being followed. Finally, I think we both got too tired to stay out any longer, and we went back to our houses. But I still constantly think about how quickly he got to us. If we hadn't sprinted right when we did, he would have caught us as we were getting into the car. I literally slammed my door about a second before he came barreling out of the woods towards us. Plus, the fact that there were no houses nearby. This person was waiting in the woods in full hunting gear, with a weapon and we clearly weren't animals, as we had a flashlight. And there is no trespassing sign in sight. The whole area around this graveyard is a state park. I got out into the woods and into weird places in the night a lot, and I've seen some stuff I would consider supernatural that really scared me, but none of those things ever truly made me afraid to go into the woods like he did. I still got out on my own, but I really never let my guard down like I used to. I grew up in the Midwest US. When I was a junior in high school, I was out for a hike at a local trail in the National Forest. This was a good 20 miles from town, way out in the sticks. It's a box canyon, so you start at the rim and hike down into the canyon. It was autumn and late afternoon when I pulled into the empty parking area, but there was plenty of light. By the time I got to the bottom of the canyon, the sun was getting pretty low. I was down in the canyon and got that feeling that something wasn't quite right. I started looking behind me as I walked every few steps. I just couldn't shake this feeling. Finally, on one of these backward glances, I spotted a man peeking out from behind a tree. Not far at all, maybe a hundred feet. It was the weirdest thing to catch a guy watching me. He knew I'd seen him and stepped out saying, Sorry, I didn't want to scare you. He was an adult man and I was a scrawny 17 year old kid. We were on the trail in a public park. There was no reason to hide. I wouldn't have been surprised nor alarmed to see another hiker unless they were acting like a weirdo. I mumbled something about getting back to my car and started heading back towards the parking area, leaving him standing there. As soon as I was out of view, I ran all the way back. There were no other cars other than mine, which only added further to the weirdness. I realize it's entirely likely that he was on foot and possibly lived near the trailhead, as there were houses out there. But it's interesting how you get that sense that you're being watched, and it often turns out to be true. If you see someone hiking alone, 
Try not to be a creep. The following is my account of what occurred in the woods while hiking a couple of days ago. Tuesday afternoon, I decided to take advantage of the nice weather and go for a little hike. I wanted to explore a nature preserve I had only previously explored briefly. This nature preserve happened to be nestled between a cemetery, church school, and a mental health hospital. After about 30 minutes of uneventful walking in the woods, I came across a slightly developed area. Tucked down a hill and in the middle of the forest, I was shocked to find a paved area and a couple of isolated concrete walls. A feeling of adventure and discovery took over as I instantly became excited to explore. When I stepped close to the paved area, things started to change. I started to feel a little uneasy, but didn't pay much attention to it. When I made it to the paved area, I became confused. There was an empty metal chair sitting in the middle of the clearing on the concrete. Part of me was fascinated as I thought this looked cool and creepy. I snapped a quick picture too to capture the moment. After staring for a minute, I decided to investigate the chair. However, I again got an uneasy feeling when I got closer to the chair. Due to this, I decided it would be best not to explore the area that day. I slowly turned and began to walk off as I quietly said, this place is creepier than I remembered. This is when my experience occurred. Almost like someone responding to me, I heard a loud and direct, nobody likes it here. I quickly whipped around to scan for the person. Based on the voice, it would have been about a five to eight year old boy. However, when I turned around, there was nobody to be found. The likely explanation would have been just some kid playing in the woods. This doesn't add up though. There was only one path in and out of the area and I was standing on it. I also didn't see another person the whole time I was there. The absence of parents or any real route in or out suddenly hit me. My concern quickly changed to fear. I took a last look only to see nothing. Before I started sprinting up the path and out of the woods, I eventually caught my breath, but still had no explanation. Even after I heard the voice, there was no movement that I would have expected to hear from a person. I've never had anything close to a paranormal encounter before and have always been pretty skeptical. However, now I don't know what to think. I can't rationalize the voice or situation at all. Historical research hasn't given me any special leads. My name is Luke, and I am now 20 years old. This story happened to me when I was 17. The experience still gives me chills to this day. In May 2017, I found myself going out a lot more on my mountain bike. I was getting bored of cruising around the streets, so I wanted to go for a trail slash woodland bike ride. I've never been to Lee Woods before then. Personally, I don't think I'll be going alone again. After some researching into a few different areas, Lee Woods seemed to me my best bet. Living only a few miles away from it, it was a nice bike ride. Upon arriving, it looked peaceful, and I was almost in a dreamlike state by my first look at the place. For a woodland area in England, let alone Bristol, it was amazing. On going into the woods, I remembered seeing different colours at the start of each trail, signifying difficulty for bikers and length of walkers. Don't take my word on that bit. I still have no clue what it really means. So I decided to go down a blue trail, I believe, to see how it was. Finding it exciting, I decided to go down the harder trail and now here's where it starts to get weird. I began having this sort of vision, looking around as if I'm being swallowed by the woodland. Everything felt like it was getting bigger and further away. I brushed it off, 
but it turns out I actually lost track of time. I got lost on the trail. Now bear in mind I'm very observant and aware of my surroundings before this trail. I then came to a strange opening. I could go left, in the rough direction of the way out, or right, deeper into the woods. And me being me, elected to go deeper in. I came to a weird little trail that had dodgy written all over it. I went against my gut feeling of turning back and went down there. I came to a point of which the trail continued, but it was getting more dangerous. The trail being too bumpy for me to even walk down. Then I turned back. But for a few minutes before turning back, I don't know why, I just stood still staring down at the trail. I felt like I was being watched from all angles, even though it would be nearly impossible to have that many eyes surrounding me in the area. I got nervous and began walking back up the hill, as I was too tired to ride at this point. Keep in mind my bike tires are completely solid. No punctures, slow punctures or anything wrong at all. I wish I still had pictures of that bike. Upon getting back to the spot where I originally went to the trail, that weird loss of time thing happened. I felt as if the whole path had stretched by half a mile, as if the woodland were moving. I began walking up the path, feeling that same eerie sensation of being watched as I did beforehand. This time, it felt a bit more sinister. It felt as if something was about to happen. Bearing in mind I hadn't seen a single person at this point in time since I went down that first trail. I'll explain the scenery before continuing. It's a long path, a slight steep hill to my left, a very narrow river to my right, maybe four feet deep and maybe four feet wide. Bushes on the, on the other side of the river, with the odd tree every now and then. Upon getting about a quarter of the way up the slowly inclining path, I hear a woman crying behind a tree up ahead. I start slowing down my walking pace to try and get a good look behind the tree, but the whole time I'm thinking to myself, why would someone jump across to cry behind a tree? So I edge closer to the river and look behind to see if the person is okay. Also because many people go to Lee Woods to end their lives, so I was hoping to perhaps help this person. But as you guessed, there's no one there, and the crying stopped. A bit weirded out, I just slowly turn away and begin walking again, a bit quicker, as I was unnerved at the time. I've had paranormal experiences before, but not usually in a place like the woods, usually in a house or some sort of building, so this was new to me. I had this sudden shiver as I was walking and maybe a minute or so later, only a few meters away from where I heard the crying, it started again. But this time it was right opposite me and crossed the river. I didn't bother looking. I started to go in a bit of a jog. As I got faster, I heard the bushes rustling, as if it was following me. Upon hearing this, I sped up and the crying became more hysterical. Bear in mind, my bike was fine before this moment in time. I thought to myself, screw this, I'm gone. I went up on my bike with the adrenaline that was rushing through me and came to almost a sudden stop. The back tire on my bike had become completely flat. So I had no other choice but to sprint with my bike and pray for the best that I don't trip up or end up having to throw it to run faster. With the crying person still close to me, and keeping up, I'm running faster and faster, praying I just get off this path that I was on. I had that feeling that I wanted to cry, because I couldn't actually do anything to help the situation or get out of it faster. And after what felt like an hour, but in reality was probably only five to ten minutes, I could see the car park. The crying had stopped following me getting closer and started moving back down to where I first heard it. I sprinted out into the car park. I must have been as white as a sheet of paper, and hysterical with my breathing and wheezing as multiple people in the car park turned to look at me like I was crazy. I saw the exit sign out the car park and ran towards it. While doing so, I noticed my bike to be moving a lot smoother on approaching the car park exit. I couldn't believe it. My bike tire had suddenly regained all its air. It was solid again, as it was before the unnerving crying person shenanigans. 
I jumped on my bike and got away from Lee Woods as fast as I could, and I've never been back since, as every person I tell this story to becomes reluctant to go there with me, or any extra people. The thing that makes this scary, for me at least, is that I have Irish heritage. In Irish folklore, there is a demon woman called the Banshee. She is seen in woodlands next to rivers and lakes, washing blood off clothes. It is said that if you see her washing blood off clothes, the person who owns these clothes will die. Alternatively, if you hear her crying, it means death. I can't remember the meaning exactly of the deaths, but it can either mean you or a loved one will pass. Since 2017, I have lost my auntie, two of my best friends, and a dog. Lee Woods are no joke. There are many stories that have come out of Lee Woods too. You can read online about them. Search up Lee Woods Bristol Haunting. It's rated 87th most haunted place in the UK, according to Higgy Pop at least. It's a popular spot in Bristol for people taking their lives, or it was at least. Even the ghost of Imsbard Kingdom Brunel has been spotted there looking over the suspension bridge in which he designed. Me and my friends went into my backyard forest. We went at least five minutes deep into the forest down to a stream. We looked across the stream and saw a log, or at least we thought it was a log. It might have been a log, but when one of us pointed it out, it seemed to have turned its head. We ran as fast as we could out of the forest. It was a sleepover. We went to sleep around 3am, but I ended up waking up around 4am after hearing a noise. I saw a shadowy figure that immediately disappeared once I saw it. Haven't seen any of it since. It could have just been my imagination, but I could have sworn that I saw it, and it had the same outline as what we saw from a distance earlier. My friends told me that I was just paranoid, but I don't think I was. So I checked it out again in the same place and the log figure was gone. So I still feel as if that thing was not after me, but after one of my friends. Two years later and still haven't heard anything or seen anything of it, although every now and then I get a feeling that I am being watched. I have been getting a little less sleep, but I think that it might just be the fact that my sleep schedule is trying to adjust, but I still don't know what that thing is and whether or not it was real or it was all part of my mind playing tricks on me, but I don't think that it was. Remember when I said I hadn't seen anything of it since? I lied. The other day, I went back in the forest and there it was in the same position that me and my friends saw it two years ago. I brought them over there and they confirmed that we were seeing the same thing that we had seen two years ago. It did not look over this time, but I have had an uneasy feeling ever since I saw it. They started to stop one year after, but when I saw it a few days ago, the uneasy feeling increased. I don't know what it is, or what it wants, but I don't like it. It is not anything I have seen in any paranormal YouTube videos, or anything about the paranormal, which leads me to believe it was not real. But my friends had confirmed it was real, and I am not questioning what they said. So it was real, and it was scary. I hope the uneasy feeling goes down soon. And if the thing ever comes near my house again, I am going to call the police. And I forgot to mention that the morning after the sleepover, I saw no footprints, but something else that I can't put my finger on. Something that no human foot could ever make. So I have no idea what it was and don't plan to try and figure it out. I live in a small town in South Africa. Near my town there is a large patch of woods, and since the outbreak of coronavirus, I haven't been in the woods for a long time. 
until yesterday. So my friend called me to ask if I wanted to join him and a few other mates to play a game of paintball in the woods, and obviously I was keen. I got my paintball gear and gun and headed off to my mate's place. There were six of us. Chase, Liam, Matt, Joey, Stephen and me. We headed off to the woods but made a few stops to fill up on petrol and get some gas for the paintball guns. When we finally got to the woods, we parked the cars, got in our gear and ventured out into the forest to find the perfect spot to paintball. Eventually, we got deep enough and to an area with sufficient cover and space to play a good game of capture the flag. We played a couple of games and since it's winter, it got dark really quickly but we planned for this and brought our flashlights and decided to play a couple of night games which is extremely hard especially in the forest we're in. During one match, Joey and I decided to sit out because we were both tired and just needed a quick breather and the others continued to play for a significant good distance away from us. While we're chilling and I was rolling a joint and Joey went to go take a piss a few meters away from me. While I was busy rolling I had the flashlight pointing towards myself since there were no other lights to allow me to see what I was doing in around me. It was completely dark. I couldn't even see two meters ahead of myself because of how dark it was. Suddenly I heard footsteps coming my way but thought it was Joey and soon realized I couldn't see any lights from his flashlight. So now I'm more vigilant but still relaxed, thinking that he's perhaps trying to play a prank on me or something. But the footsteps stopped a few meters away from me. So I lifted up my flashlight and pointed it in the direction where I heard the footsteps and scanned the area but saw bushes and trees and I just thought it might be Joey hiding in the bushes or behind a tree waiting to give me a jump scare. Then I heard footsteps coming in the opposite direction and when I looked I could see it was Joey because he was holding his flashlight. That's when I stopped what I was doing and picked up my flashlight and paintball gun and when Joey reached me I whispered, bro I think there's someone over there. And Joey obviously didn't believe me and just said to stop being a baby. But he soon regretted saying that because I decided to do one last scan where I heard the footsteps and to my horror I saw someone peeking and staring right at me from behind the tree 10 to 11 meters away. I shouted and when Joey heard me, he looked at me and where the man looked and instantly jumped up picking up his paintball gun. We stared at each other for at least two minutes, but it felt like forever until we stepped out from behind the tree. It was a large man of at least six foot, was filthy, it looked like he hadn't taken a bath in years, wearing baggy ripped up jeans and just an old dirty zipped up bomber jacket. Plus we could see that he was on something or he was just crazy and holding something dark behind his back. What are you guys doing out here when it's so dark? We couldn't even answer him because of the shock. Joey started with fear in his voice. We were just leaving. But the man nodded his head in disagreement and said, No, you're not. You're friends and still playing the game. I felt a shiver down my spine. How about we play a game on our own while you wait for your friends? And that's when he finally showed us what was behind his back, a large machete. That's when I knew we had to get out of there. So I aimed my paintball gun and in the toughest way I could muster up, I told him, leave now or I'll shoot. Even though I only had about six to seven paintballs loaded and Joey did the exact same thing by aiming it at the man, even though he had no ammo left in his paintball gun. He didn't even flinch, but did something that honestly made my skin crawl. He just smiled and said, the game starts now. And suddenly he rushed at us. So I told Joey to run while I fired my last paintballs at him. And luckily I got him in the head, which caused him to fall. And that was our chance to book it and link up with our other friends. As soon as we started running, we heard the footsteps again. He was actually gaining on us so we could barely see, but we couldn't slow down because we knew what would happen if we did. So we just carried on sprinting our hearts out until we heard other paintball guns being shot. So we knew we were close. Joey started shouting to get everyone's attention and all of a sudden I heard a huge thud. Joey trips and twists his ankle. I turn around to help him up and when I did I could see the man running at full sprint towards us. In that moment I thought it was going to be the end of us but our friend heard our screams 
and rushed to help us when he saw the man. They all started firing at him, and he knew he wasn't going to be able to take us all on, so he opted to turn around and disappear into the woods. We helped Joey up and rushed off with our stuff to the cars. When we got to my friend's place, we helped Joey treat his ankle, and I proceeded to tell my friends everything that happened, and they were all creeped out. It's safe to say the next time I'm in those woods, I will be more vigilant. So, this happened a few years back, my spring break senior year of high school. I was hiking part of the long trail, which goes south from Glastonbury to Bennington, and it was the usual very cold nights, warm muddy days Vermont usually has in spring, so it was pretty fun to hike in. I was going to take a day and rest my feet, go swimming in a pond and cool off, so I took a detour onto the Bald Mountain Trail. I got to my campsite around 5, and the sun was setting, so I set up my hammock and rain trap, and made a fire. I made some mountain house beef stroganoff, and decided to just lay down and watch the fire. I hadn't seen anyone since before noon, which is unusual because it's a pretty well travelled section of the trail. I started to get really uneasy, and it definitely felt like someone was watching me from a distance. I ended up sitting with my back against a maple, facing the fire and holding my camp knife. A few hours later, around 9 to 10 ish, I heard a really loud crash in the woods, like a plane falling out of the sky, or a freight train right next to me. Then dead silence. No wind, no leaves, no owls, just dead quiet. I remember getting really, really uncomfortable and shouting out to see if there was anyone out there, but I just started hearing a really subtle droning noise, like a key being rubbed on a bass string, or radio static, but super low pitched. I didn't sleep at all that night, I just watched the moon go really slowly over the sky, and the sound get quieter as it got lighter outside. When I could see well enough to walk, I picked up my gear and sprinted back to the main trail, and found some people up early, and hiked with them all the way back. This story happened just before lockdown, but I've only just decided to share it because I still am unsure what happened. It happened in West Yorkshire in the UK. This occurred in the woods about 10 minutes away from my house, in early March. My friends and I were all free on a weekend and decided to go down to a large flat area in the woods near the river. Around 3pm I meet up with my friends, Wilma, Sarah, Barbara and Claire. After about 20 minutes Barbara starts having a slight panic attack and goes off into the woods to calm down without telling us where she's going. She didn't come back after half an hour so we're all a bit worried, so Claire and I decide to try and find her. We walked along an area with a signal and tried to call her but she didn't pick up. After a few minutes, she texted Claire and told her she was fine but might have to just go home. Claire and I walk back to where Wilma and Sarah are, and as we approach we see them over to the left of the flat area, near an area that takes you along the river. The area was muddy from rain the previous day. We run down to ask them what they're doing when Wilma tells us that she heard a loud whimpering coming from behind some trees. The area along the river is covered with foliage and trees, and we're all pretty freaked out, until Claire says that it could be Barbara trying to mess with us. We agree this is likely the option, but Sarah and I decide it would be best if we try and see what it is. We start walking down the side of the river, and we do reach the path which is slightly muddy from the rain, meaning you could see fresh prints in the mud. Unfortunately, Sarah already walked over it when we noticed footprints, so we couldn't be sure it wasn't accidentally them. We both kept to the sides of the path where it was more solid, and after about two minutes of walking we get to a fallen tree, where the path forks around it. We saw in the muddy path footprints, and when we looked closer handprints too, 
and they looked pretty recent. We thought it could have just been a person, but decided to crouch down and have a better look. When we noticed something really weird. The footprints were bigger than ours, UK size 8, meaning it couldn't be Barbara, as her feet are smaller, and the footprints were almost half as narrow as mine. We looked at the handprints and noticed something similar. The hands themselves were roughly as big as ours, but the palms were half as long, yet the fingers were normally sized. After this, we tried to go to the top path around the tree, but it was blocked off by a fallen branch, so we went to the bottom. When we got around the bottom, we saw that the path had ended, but also saw something else. After the end of the path, the long grass had been walked on and trampled down. It was obviously done recently, so now we were really freaking out. We followed the trampled grass until we reached an area where we could still see trampled foliage, but it went straight up a steep hill covered in trees and bushes. We decided there is nothing else we can do, and begin to head back to the flat. We're around 7 minutes away at this point, then we hear a loud whistle, not coming from our friends considering how far away they are. We are pretty shook, and start to rush back. When we get back, Wilma is the only one we immediately saw, so we assumed it was Claire and Barbara that whistled, and Barbara might have somehow been making the tracks. So we ran over to Wilma, and tell them what happened when we see that Claire and Barbara, and they have both been sat there for the time we've been away. After this we're a bit freaked out, but stay down there for around half an hour but decide to leave. I'm still unsure as to why, if it was a real person, they'd be walking down a path that leads to a hill barefoot. If it is of any help, there is some extra info. The mud was probably about a centimetre deep. I'm not an expert in tracking, but I don't think recent footprints would be disfigured that quickly, if only in about a centimetre of mud. It had been raining the day before, but not on the actual day. The actual day was somewhat warm and dry, but the woods were still damp. I've tried to do some research on animals and folklore and cryptids in the area, but can't really find anything. If anyone has an explanation for what we saw, I'd be hella grateful. Somehow, two to three years ago, I was with my friends in the forest. I remember that it was winter. There was snow everywhere, and it was getting darker. We followed the path, talking and laughing. We had already gone quite a long way from the entrance to the forest, but in a maximum of two minutes, would have been a quick enough run to get to the entrance. We reached the denser part of the forest, at that moment, it was really dark, and as I was walking first, I pulled out the phone and turned on its flashlight. A moment later, on my left, I heard the sound of walking in the snow and branches cracking. I told everyone to stop and be quiet. When they did, the sound became louder. I directed the light there and saw the light reflecting back on me on something I wasn't sure what it was, like a sheet of metal, or cat eyes. Then, it hid behind a tree. We started to quickly go back to the entrance of the forest, because we thought it was a wild animal. When we turned around, about 30 seconds later, we saw a light ball the size of a basketball. It had a strong, bright light. It didn't make any sounds, it hung in one place. When the fear became less, we turned around and started to run away. We ran out of the forest, but continued running until we found ourselves in a really well-lit street. I think it was really some kind of animal, but I have no idea what kind of ball of light it was. We were probably tired, and we made ourselves think it was something so big because neither of us drinks or smokes anything, so it was definitely not alcohol, or other stuff. Hey guys, it's Mort here, and thank you so much for listening. I'd like to extend a huge thank you to Forgotten Lives for joining us in tonight's video. He has done an absolutely fantastic story on Annie Oakley. Really interesting, really in-depth, I really like it, and I'm... 98% certain most of you will as well. It would certainly mean a lot to me if you guys could check the video out when you're done. So go ahead and uh, 
click on it. The, the link's on screen now. Hey, right, right there. Right. Oh, yep. Just give that a click or in the description. But until then, stay awesome. And I'll see you in the next one.